On this channel, I specialize in making really complex looking images easy to create. So just follow along with my step-by-step -step tutorial of this painting and you will amaze yourself. Okay, I'm going to use some techniques during this tutorial that will make it far easier than you thought it was going to be. And as usual, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad with the Apple Pencil. But I'm sure you could use a different app on a different tablet and apply quite a few of the techniques that I'm going to show you anyway and still come up with very similar results. But in terms of this app, I have opened an A4 canvas, which is 297 millimeters by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. Now it is one of the default canvas sizes, so within the gallery you can just click the plus symbol and then it's A4 there. In terms of the color profile, I'm just using this, which is the sRGB, and it's the one that ends in 2.1, which is on the list here. In terms of the colors, I have pre-selected a color palette, and each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code that is linked to it. Each of these codes is linked down in the video description. You can take a note of them, type them in here one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here and then you can tap it into this area yourself one at a time. Or next to the codes that are down in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free there to save you some time. I mean, obviously Patreon is the place where you can go and get exclusive content and support me over there too. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the organic section rainforest brush. I'm going to be using within airbrushing the soft brush, maybe the medium brush too. Within inking, I'm going to be using the studio pen. And that's probably it. If I add any more later, then obviously I'll make that very clear as we go along. If you do like this kind of tutorial, please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and don't forget that bell notification button to make sure you're notified of all my future tutorials as well. And with all that said and done, let's get started. So we're going to go to our colors. The first color on the top row, I'm going to drag to flood fill the entire canvas and it just gets rid of the white background. I'm going to switch to the second color. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to stay on the same layer, but I'm going to put the brush size up to 20%. I'm going to put the strength up to about 60%. And very simply halfway up, I'm going to do a band of this color. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur it in to about the 60%, like that. I'm going to create a new layer on top, back still within soft brush airbrushing. I'm going to turn it down to about 10% size, 100% opacity. And again, halfway, I'm going to do a band of this adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur that in, not quite as much to about the 40%. I'm going to create a new layer on that layer. I'm going to change the properties or the blend mode from normal. And I'm going to scroll down to add and you can see the little symbol changes from an N to an A. And I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. Now I'm going to tap on the brush and the spacing by default, because I've just reset it, is at 27%. I'm going to change the spacing so that the textures become slightly further apart. And about 40% I think will work better. And we're also going to use that setting for the trees later on. But still working on the clouds, we're going to have that set to about 5% size and about 10% opacity. And I'm just going to start lightly pressing, building in some textures. Much of this is going to be obscured by trees, but we're going to start building in some texture anyway. And I'm going to press a bit harder as we get up into this right corner. I just want to set the groundwork of some of this texture to begin with. I'm going to just keep it quite a light touch, just a, a hint of it more on that side. And then it's definitely going to be just a bit more powerful over on this side. Allow it to blend down to this area a little bit too, something like this. Not too much though. Then we're going to create a layer on top of that. I'm going to go to the fourth color along. I'm going to switch to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to have it at around 5% size and about 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start building in, just taking away from some of these textures a little bit, starting to introduce a different tone, different colors, a kind of softer look as we kind of come across here a little bit. 
Again, we're not going to see much of this. It's going to be quite bleached out by some really intense light. Got a bit heavy there. But it's good to have just a, a base for things to work against. So I'm going to turn that down now to about 3% size, still at the 20% opacity. And I'm going to tap in some textures here higher up. I'm not going to overly worry about these. It's, it's all just texture and layers. A few more shapes. Stay on the same layer. I'm going to move to the fifth color along. It's just a slightly darker color. So move it down to the 2% size, perhaps. Stay at the 20% opacity. And we've just got a darker influence coming here as well. So maybe just on some of the leading edges at the top, we can just have a slightly darker tone in there as well. Okay. If yours is you know different than this, which it's bound to be, then that's okay. We're just keeping it quite vague anyway. Perhaps we'll just go in and add just a few hints of it over this size, lightly add some bands and stripes almost. I'm pressing lightly, I don't want them to be too overbearing, too powerful, but just a hint. Then we can create a layer on top, layer five, change the blender mode from normal to add. I'm also going to still use the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm gonna put it up to about 30% size down to about 10% opacity. And I'm gonna make sure I'm on a, a nice color. So I'm gonna go for this color, which is the sixth color along on the top row. And the sun's gonna be about here. So I'm gonna start bringing in its influence about here. And you can see it's really quite a bright effect. So I'm just gonna circle it in, let its impact sort of expand around, do it a few times. It's really bleaching out most of what we've got anyway. I like to come over here a little bit more something like that. So I'm just gonna go back a layer to layer four, and I'm also gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I think I might just blur that in, soften that in a bit more, so 10% blur, I think works better. I might also go back to layer three, and do the same, so adjustments, Gaussian blur, and soften that in a little less perhaps, not all the way to 10%, 5% will do. And you can see you've created kind of textures and a soft, set of colors that we can always go back in and fine tune a little later on. Well, that will do to begin with. I'm gonna go back to layer one and I'm gonna click the plus symbol to create a layer above the first initial background sky layer, but importantly below a lot of those cloud features and glow because I want this to blend in quite subtly. I'm gonna to go to the soft, actually I'm gonna go to the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm going to use these other colors later. And I'm gonna go for the second color on the bottom row. I think I might just increase the size of the brush actually to 5%, still at 100% opacity. And just kind of below the halfway point, most of this we're not going to see anyway, but I'm going to bring just a bit of slight undulating background. So if you see little bits of it poking through, then at least we've got something there. And I don't care if this fills in for the other area, so I'm gonna drag that circle hold it until it fills. There's a little bit of a gap, a line, but if I slide that across, then it should fill most of that in. And if it hasn't, you can just go and do it manually anyway. And then on the same layer, I'm gonna to switch to the third color along. Perhaps on that layer, I might just tap on it, engage the alpha lock, which is just here. You can see it's ticked now. Probably go back in with the organic rainforest brush, set to 2% size. 20% opacity and with this new color, I'm just going to start to bring in more kind of texture in this backgroundy area. So it softens and mutes some of that edge. Perhaps I'll turn it down even further. So the lowest part of 2%, up to about 40% opacity. Zoom in just a touch and I can really create some kind of separation in some of those shapes maybe. Now the alpha lock is important because I cannot add anything above it. All the detail I'm adding now is gonna be contained within the shape that I've added to that layer and it won't go beyond the boundaries, which is really useful because you can be really quick and quite untidy and yet it doesn't make a mess of everything, which is perfect. So allow that to kind of disappear out on the edges. We're not gonna see most of this anyway, but it, it's just useful. Perhaps put it up to 4%, again, 
I've made sure that top edge is, is kind of muted and disappeared a little bit like that. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the top and create another layer on top of everything. I'm gonna keep the blend mode on normal. I'm going to switch to the inking studio pen. Go to my colors, I'm gonna choose the first color on the bottom row, which is gonna seem really dark by contrast, which is fine, which is good. I'm gonna set the size to 40% size and 100% opacity. And again, just kind of below this point, so you can just set where you want the tree trunks to grow from. So maybe just a few points here. I'm gonna have other textures to obscure these lines, so don't worry about that. But then you can start to create some shapes. And this is a pressure sensitive brush. So when you press more near the base of the tree trunk, you're gonna get a thicker shape and then you press less as you go further along and it gets thinner. Perhaps I was a little too thick at the beginning, so just go careful with it. Perhaps we can have another one that sort of twists in and out. And then another one, create some little bumps and kind of wiggles within it. And then other ones that grow alongside it, perhaps that interplay with it. Could be quite nice, depending on the type of tree you want to create. Obviously we can have branches that branch off, literally. Now, I don't really feel inclined to worry about every single branch. We're just getting an initial set of shapes to begin with. And then we're gonna add quite a lot of foliage to this. So it's gonna obscure much of the, the need for branches anyway. So I'm allowing this to be fairly straightforward, quite loose. Just allow the lines to meander and you press more and more lightly as you go further up, allow them to become more kind of wiggly as they go as well. Again, have other ones that interplay and cut up, and go, go through, cut through some of the shapes you've already got. Maybe other ones that lean off this way a bit more. I'm gonna try and contain it within the, the canvas frame. I don't wanna extend beyond about there really. In fact, it almost feels like it's gone too far, but as long as I'm just careful now not to allow it to go much further. And I may add some more trunks and branches, but I'm gonna do some more over on this side now. Again, thicker to begin with, and then it sort of dwindles off as it goes further up. And obviously it needs to split at certain points to have that sense of branching off. Once you get used to the, the motion of pressing a little bit more at the base and then releasing that pressure and you, once you get into the flow of it, you can really speed it up a little bit. And also, you start off with gentler curves at the bottom, and then as it goes further up, you start to get those little wiggles and corners almost. And it's quite a, a quick process to create these, so if you're not happy with it, then, you know, double finger backwards, retrace your steps, recreate them until you're happier with them. I would say sometimes you can agonize too much over this type of shape and detail and actually you can just convince yourself it doesn't look right no matter how you do it. So don't spend too long on these, just spend enough time for it to kind of get the feel for it. And by the time we're adding foliage over the top, you'll find that it, it really is changing and, and benefiting the whole look anyway. I might come back to that and add a little bit more, but for now, I'm gonna move forward. I'll do the next detail on a different layer, just in case it doesn't quite work and we have to adjust different things. I like to keep things separately initially. So layer eight, we go to the brushes, we go to the organic rainforest brush again, and we're gonna set the size. Let's just test that. Yeah, roughly about right. So three or 4%, I'll put it on three initially, on 100% opacity, and in and amongst that now, we can start to add some foliage leaves on our tree. Now, if you press lightly, you're gonna get a really kind of washed out look. So I'm pressing on, it's at 100% opacity, but obviously that pressure sensitivity is going to impact as well. So I'm pressing on quite a bit to get these really nice dark tones. Now, especially along that top edge, we're going to get a real sense of a clear, dark area. So you need to go over enough times to create that real darkness and I might need to add more branches and tree trunks, but I kind of want them kind of merging together here a little bit as well. I think it will look nice. And then as we come further down, allow gaps to start. 
introduce gaps into the, the tree. We want to see those branches and tree trunks. I'm going to reduce it down maybe to the 2%, just nudged into the 2% and we're going to get some slightly smaller textures that way we can control it and go exactly where we want it to a little bit more. And there's nothing wrong with adding even more near the top as well. Allow it all to start building up. And crossing over, like I was saying. As we come further down, it can just get a bit more sparse, a bit more broken up. Still there, but not quite as condensed. We can always go in, if you long press with the eraser, press it again, you'll see we've got the same brush set for the eraser. So if you wanted to remove bits of it, whoops, probably need to set the size to be similar as well. So 2% size, 100% opacity, and you can chip away in the same relative texture as well. If you wanted to subdue, reduce some bits and make other bits pop in size a little bit more, you can use that to do that. Go back to the brush. Again, I want another little outcropping, outcrop of foliage here. I'm doing a series of little kind of blobs and mounds and collections that all then in various ways and areas sort of collect and merge together too. So smaller little collections here at the bottom area. And then as we get further up, you're going to get more and more of the branch ends, if you like, where it splits and divides. Therefore, it produces more and more of the shapes and the foliage that all overlap and really condense together by the time it gets to the very top. By the time you've added some of this foliage, you might look at it and think, well, I need to add more branches and that's fine too. Obviously, if you've got a lot of these leaves and greenery, it's not green, but if you've got a lot of this and it, it would be heavy, then you need the branches to support it and literally hold it. So I would recommend once you've initially got the trees, do as many of these until you, you think it looks nice and then step back, zoom out. Are there enough branches in all of the areas to really support everything you've created. I'm just going to create some kind of lower down features too. It doesn't all have to be reserved entirely at the top. As a general rule, I'm going to keep it more towards the top, but it doesn't have to be exclusively at the top. It's a little bit further down here and there too. And then I'm just going to allow sort of like some bits to break free here and there. I mean, like I said, you know, you can still see the branches but you needn't worry too much because it's pretty well obscured in many areas. So yeah, that's why I was saying don't agonize over the branches and the tree trunks because at this point, if you had to done that, you'd be worrying about obscuring it because you put all that time into making it look just so, and then you're just gonna cover it up anyway, which would, you know, sometimes it goes against the grain. So it's often as well to reserve the real fine tuning once you've got all the foundation layers in place and then you can go back and you can spend the time to really fine tune. A little bit down here, like I was saying, just so it's not completely empty, not as much. Maybe we can do some features on the ground level. We can get rid of some of this texture that way. The initial guidelines that were created, we can obscure those quite easily with some ground detail. Then we can go to that layer and we can press on the layer and engage alpha lock. With the same brush, we're gonna select the second color. We're gonna set the brush at 2% size, 100% opacity still. And we're just going to start layering some extra textures here. So we've got all the, the real dark kind of silhouetted color if you like, but then we're adding, I've zoomed in a little bit. You see it does look quite patchy, but we're adding some extra texture in here with this green. Don't do too much of this. It's just about making it look less flat, giving it some life, especially when you zoom back out. But don't go crazy with this. Just add it here and there. It also helps to push some of the branches back more and the tree trunks back and bring some of this further in front of it. I'm 
add a little bit more of it down in the bottom area perhaps. At this point we can take that layer, now I'm relatively happy with it, and I can tap on it and merge down. It's instantly disabled the alpha lock, which is fine. I'm gonna go in with the eraser, set to airbrushing medium brush, 2% size, 70% opacity, and anything that I'm just not quite happy with on that top edge, if it's sticking out too much, or it's just a bit too almost faded, I can just tidy it up if I'm not happy with it. If anything looks just a little bit too anomalous, then you can get rid of it. Generally speaking, I'm, I'm fine with it although. Now I'm gonna create a layer above, layer eight, and I'm gonna tap on that layer and engage clipping mask, tap on clipping mask. That means it links now to the layer underneath where all the trees were and anything we add to this new layer will only add things within the confines and the shapes of the layer underneath, like so. It means it won't go outside of the edge boundaries, which is perfect. On this layer, we're gonna change the blown mode from normal to add again, and I'm gonna to change to airbrushing again, soft brush. I'm gonna have the size much lower down about 10% size and 10% opacity. And I'm gonna choose quite a strong color. So this orange on the top row at the end and where the sun is, I'm gonna start bringing in that light. We haven't really specifically created the sun yet, but we're definitely going to start by bringing in the glow. And I can just feed that across and it just does a really effective job of bleaching out the dark colors and we can extend that further up too, extend that across a little bit, and extend that up even more, up into these top areas a little bit more, and also lower down too, and bring its impact. And we're gonna switch to this yellow color next, and still with the same brush, maybe put it up to about 25%. Still, well, perhaps even lower than 10%, maybe something around the 5%, I think would work. And tap a few more times where we want that center focal point to be of light and really ramp up the intensity. The more we do that, the more intense it's gonna be. Just push it, if it's not quite big enough, a little bit more side to side. Keep tapping it, building it in. There's a limit to how intense we want that to be, but I think we're just about reaching that point now. I'm quite liking that effect. A little bit more over here, perhaps. A little bit more over here. I think that's working nicely. I'm just gonna go I'm gonna go back, back to the orange. I'm gonna put it up to, well, really quite big. It's about 80% size, 10% opacity, and just tap it twice in that area. And it's just pushing the glow even further into our scene. I think it really helps. I'm just gonna go back to layer five. We had the blend mode to add there also. I'm gonna perhaps change to the yellow color. So the second from the right, still with a soft brush, 10% size, 10% opacity, and I can just Maybe just add a bit more of that influence in the background too. So the two will combine together really nicely. I'm gonna go back to the layer three that had our real background light colors. You can see it just disappearing and reappearing when I tick it and untick it. I'm gonna slide it to duplicate it and you can see it's really ramped it up there, which I think is working even better. So I'm gonna go back to layer two, click the plus symbol to create a layer above that. Go back to my colors, I'm gonna choose this dark green, which is third from the right, with the airbrushing soft brush, set to 10% size, 100% opacity, and just get some nice green color to this bottom area. Just be careful near the edge where it meets the trees and shrubs and stuff. Still with the soft brush, we're gonna move to the third color on the bottom row, 2% size and about 30% opacity. And we're just going to start building in where the rays of light are kind of impacting. So the sun is gonna be in this area. So we can extend, we don't have to be neat with this, we're just extending where the impact. So that's the vanishing point, and we've just got like a, almost like a beam that cuts out like this. And then obviously all these lights, or light that escapes through the trees, all is pointing towards the, the source. And we can have some over here too. Again, it all points towards this area. Again, don't worry about it being neat. Perhaps we'll change to the fourth color from the right, and we can add this in the mix as well. Again, it all points towards that sun. 
some over on this edge too. Then we can go to the smudge tool, tap on it, select the rainforest brush within organic. So about 3% size, 100% strength. And we can just start pushing that around as required. So I'm gonna push it to the left and right. We don't want to broaden it too much, but we can certainly sort of push it in from the, the sides and reduce it a little bit here and there or push it either way. So we're not losing that beam, but we're just playing around with it. And same with the next one, just obscuring the shapes that we've created really. We don't want those edges to be too noticeable. We want the beams to still be felt and to be there, but not the edges, not the lines. So we can really go in and just kind of scruff that up, mess it up, really kind of obscure it in many ways. So it's kind of there, but much less so. So there, you can still kind of see its impact. It's still pretty much there, but not quite like it was. We can then switch to the brush and go to the organic rainforest brush and again, go back in with the same kind of colors, but this time adding it more positively with this brush. So the third color from the left, 2% size, 20% opacity. And again, working, kind of lining up those beams, you can start to sort of positively add some of these back in, perhaps even stronger, more like 40% will work. And as we get closer to, obviously it's really going to start breaking apart. We can put some of these back in a little bit more as well. If they've been a bit too destroyed, but it's just useful way of starting, I think. I'm all for trying different ways of achieving effects. Sometimes it's by using a brush to add, sometimes it's by smudging. So again, I'm just kind of thinking about all these shapes and lines will point towards the same sun. So we've got the vanishing point of the sun. Putting some sort of dashes and shapes with this brush now, further enhancing what we've already got. Perhaps I'll go with the green, which is fourth from the right, same principle. Still, if some of these lines and shapes are starting to become a little bit too distinct, again, we can just obscure them a bit. So we're at the lowest part of 2%, maybe 3%, especially as we get nearer this foreground, we can just allow it to become even more disrupted. Go back to our colors. Maybe we'll choose the fourth color. It's really quite a golden, nice color. So back down to 2%, still at the 40%. There's gonna be real strong impact here. So I'm just gonna go in and further enhance, and build in this glow, especially in this region. There's a nice gap. And obviously we're almost directly underneath the sun looking at it. So I'm just starting to build in more of this real nice warm color here. And then more of it over here as well. Maybe increase it up to 4%. Get a touch more of it here in the real foreground too. Why not? Now it's quite a specific texture this. We can always go in with the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in. Two or three percent, three percent looks good. I'm going to create a layer on top of that. It's layer 11, back in with our colors. I've got a black, or well, pretty much black. We're going to go use that. Two percent size, 40 percent opacity, and I feel like I need to create a contrast now, so we need some darker areas. So really breaking it up, especially in this kind of foreground area, adding some of these nice dark tones in here. Maybe some large collections of areas where it's just we're losing some of that grass detail. I'm keeping a generally quite a horizontal kind of movement. I'm becoming, I'm moving quite erratically rather than not becoming erratic. I'm moving erratically, at least moving my hand, allowing it to just kind of build up the texture. You can apply this quite quickly. There's the second color there on the bottom row. I can add just to that, just for a bit more complexity. So it's not just one type of dark tone. I just want to interrupt and add variety. 
going to go to this yellow color, which is fifth color and 2% size, 40% opacity. And again, I'm just going to further push it in areas. Perhaps now when we've got the dark color, maybe on the top edge of some of these little bumps, it's just going to catch the light a little bit more in areas. Again, this is just adding more and more layers of texture, breaking it up. Maybe we can go for this color again, the fourth color from the right, and maybe more of this. It's, it's still a lighter color, but it's just a bit subtler. Again, it's still on the 2% size, but maybe more of this breaking up the colors up here. You know, the brushes are really helpful, but sometimes they just won't make up for doing things more manually. So I'm gonna alternate between these colors, third color again, you know, the, the brushes will definitely help, but sometimes you just got to get in there and really start doing it yourself by hand. Now the tree textures at the top were a really quite a, a quick method with the same brush. And in terms of the texture on the ground, it, it's definitely a slightly longer process, but I think in order to achieve the, the variations in texture and hue and tone, I think it's necessary to just Keep adding it and you can see I'm just moving around constantly adding these layers creating a sense that there's more things that stick up undulating kind of grass we're not adding blades but we're, we're, we're pretty detailed in terms of the texture although each individual texture isn't quite specified the overall effect is is quite detailed in a way okay I'm going to go back up to layer 7 that had all our tree detail on it and I'm going to go to the smudge tool smudge tool set to rainforest brush I'm going to put it to 2% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just going to allow it to kind of blend in that bottom edge where the trees were with the ground. It's just a bit harsh the way it kind of disconnected with the ground there a little bit, so kind of soften it together. I think that will work better. I'm going to go to the very top, create a layer on top of that, change the blend mode to add, soft brush, green with a white, 5% size, 40% opacity or so, and we really need to pick out the sun now, so put it in there. Now it's extra bright. Put it up to 20%, actually no less. We'll put it up to 10% size, lower. It's around 20% opacity. Tap it in a few more times there. Now that sun is definitely starting to sell it. Same layer, but I'm gonna to change to the orange. Turn it down to 2% size, five, no, maybe 10% opacity as well. And we're just going to create some beams that cut out from that point. I don't want to go into the sky so much, but anywhere where we've got like a dark area like this, perhaps we can extend those out. And I think even 10% is too strong. I was initially going to put it at five and think that was the right idea. So we can extend some of these beams of light out into these darker areas from the sun. We can extend them out. Again, just like we did with the grass, all these light beams start, originate at the sun and sort of fan out from there. Just gonna go back to layer 10 with my dark color. Perhaps this time I'll use the soft brush and I'm just gonna go 2% size and 50% opacity. And I'm just gonna be and look, fine tuning just a little bit, bringing out some of these dark colors. Perhaps I'll turn the opacity down, up and down, just to really refine some of these details. And the rainforest brush is all well and good, but sometimes those dark areas just need to be pushed a little bit further and it would be a little less broken. And perhaps again with the lightest colors, if I just want to, with the soft brush, just ramp up a few details here and there as well. Now 
and just maybe a few lines here at the very top because when we get things in the distance it tends to just stretch out into lines and bands anyway okay i'm going to leave this version here at this point on youtube i do tend to continue into extended tutorials over at my patreon page so check out the comments section if i have continued this pinned to the top comment will be the link to that extended version over at patreon thanks very much for watching if you like this video give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe and don't forget the bell notification button and i shall catch you back here soon bye for now